grief and anger in Pakistan after dozens of people are killed in an attack at a mosque in Peshawar. The Pakistani Taliban has been blamed. Were there security failures and can the embattled government win the war against the armed group? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Fully Batibo. Pakistan is mourning roughly 100 people killed in a suicide bombing at a mosque in Peshawar. The attack was the latest in a series blamed on the Tariqi Taliban or the Pakistani Taliban. But the group's leadership has distanced itself from the bombing, saying holy places should not be targeted. However, it hasn't com commented on why one of its commanders initially claimed responsibility. The attack took place in a highly fortified police compound. So was there a security failure and what's behind the increase in attacks in Pakistan? We'll be putting those questions and more to our guests in just a few minutes. But first, this report from Kamal Haider in Peshawar. I'm standing on what was the roof of the mosque. It was afternoon prayer. The suicide bomber had placed himself in the front row of the congregational prayer and that is when he detonated his device. Although the main rescue and relief and recovery effort is now over, you can still find the rescue teams here in order to ensure that nobody is still under the rubble and unaccounted for. This has been a difficult operation carried out in the dead of the night, but it has also left difficult questions for the authorities. What were they doing when they knew that there was a security threat the intelligence agencies had told the authorities that suicide bombers had penetrated into the city of Peshawar, that there was a threat of an imminent attack. But they took it lightly. There is a sense of complacency. People have to answer for what happened here. How did the suicide bomber get into such a sensitive place? Answers are needed by the people who are angry. They are asking difficult questions. But the administration and the authorities, except for photo opportunities, will tell you that this is a fight against the terrorists. What the people want is security. Hundreds of policemen were present here. They're the foot soldiers who ensure peace and security in this country. But they are now the most vulnerable. And we have seen an increasing spate of attacks against the policemen who have been complaining that they don't have sophisticated equipment, they don't have flag jackets, they don't have the kind of sophisticated weapons that the terrorists are using. People in Pakistan have rendered great sacrifices over the past few years. Over 80,000 people have laid down their lives in this country. And of course, the big question now is, is the administration able to cope with the new challenge? People are asking difficult questions. The threat is very high. The enemy or adversary is well equipped and also committed. And it will be a huge challenge in order to contain this new spike in violence. The Tariq -e Taliban Pakistan has been able to bring in sophisticated weapons from Afghanistan. They are now trying to gain a foothold in Pakistan. And it will be a huge challenge for the security apparatus in order to ensure that the sacrifices of the people of Pakistan do not go in vain. Well, the Pakistani Taliban has been fighting the government in Islamabad for more than 15 years, trying to impose its hardline interpretation of Islamic law. It has ties with Afghanistan's Taliban. In June last year, the group announced a ceasefire with the government after talks brokered by the Afghan Taliban. But in November, it ended the ceasefire, accusing the military of increasing attacks on its members. Since then, the group has expanded its offensive, ambushing police and security patrols. It wants the government to to release its members from prison and reduce military presence in former tribal areas. Well, for more on this, I'm now joined by our guests, all of whom are in Islamabad. Imtiaz Gul is the executive director of the Center for Research and Security Studies, an independent think tank. Javid Ur-Rahman is parliamentary correspondent for Pakistan's daily English language newspaper, The Nation. And Musharraf Zaidi is the founder and senior fellow at 
Tabdab, an advisory firm that focuses on public policy. A warm welcome to you all. Thank you very much for joining us on Inside Story. Imtiaz Ghul, if I can start with you, I know you've lost a family member, your cousin, who was a police officer in Peshawar in this attack. Our heartfelt condolences. Uh, the suicide bomber, as we heard our correspondents say, struck a mosque frequented by police in a heavily guarded area of Peshawar. Was there a security failure in your view? And if there was, who was responsible for the security failure? I think this uh, certainly was a big security failure. And um, also the question about the suicide bomber, the police officials uh, dealing with the entire episode are still not sure whether it was just one suicide bomber all by himself, or was there any big explosive planted somewhere? Because the impact, uh, the way the, the ceiling, uh, the roof caved in, uh, does not speak of a suicide jacket ha having been exploded. Uh, its impact usually is does not spread to the concrete in a, in a sense that uh, you know, we were told that the pillars, the concrete columns of uh, of the roof came down as the, uh, because of the impact of the detonation. And this is what then caused these nearly, I would say, more than 100 deaths. So it's a big, tough questions, big suspicions, allegations, all pointing towards a security lapse as to how it happened. It's still being investigated. Musharraf Zaidi, uh, our correspondent mentioned that there were intelligence reports, intelligence agencies issued an alert on January 21st, apparently, saying that an attack was likely to happen in Peshawar. Why were these intelligence reports not taken seriously? And who, in your view, is to blame for the security failure? I mean, let me let me tackle the first one, for, uh, the second one first, and that is who is to blame for the security failure. I think that, without question, the responsibility for securing uh, freedom and uh, the livelihoods and the property of Pakistani citizens is the states, the Re Islamic Republic of Pakistan. Uh, remember, this is an Islamic Republic of Pakistan that has already defeated the TTP. Uh, between 2014 and 2016, Pakistan and the Pakistani military and the intelligence services worked uh, hand in glove with civilian law enforcement and a whole of society kind of counterterrorism and uh, counterinsurgency uh, pushback against uh, the TTP that essentially ended the TTP. The fact that the Afghan Taliban took over in Kabul in 2021. Uh, is at least partly to blame for this resurgence, mm -hmm. but principally the distracted the distraction of the Pakistani military and the intelligence services away from securing the lives and livelihoods. Distracted of with what, Musharraf? What are they distracted by? By by domestic politics, by trying to manage the discourse, by by trying to make sure that only what they approve is, uh, is san and sanctioned uh, is what finds uh, space in the newspapers and on television by determining who the prime minister is. In 2018, the military decided that they wanted a prime minister that they could work with. They got one, and then they got sick of him, and then they got rid of him in, uh, in early 2022. So I think when a military that is very good at killing terrorists, that is very good at clearing and holding territory that belongs to the people of Pakistan, uh, even when it's so good at it, when it allows itself to be distracted by domestic politics, then the result is what we saw in Peshawar yesterday. Javid Rahman in Islamabad, do you agree with that? Is the Pakistani state, the Pakistani military uh, to blame, as uh, Musharraf says, for the complacency and, and for the lapse in, in security there? Well, uh, for the last two decades, around, we have uh, seen there is a lack of clarity. Uh, we have seen parallel uh, 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 military operations are there. And also, uh, at the same time, we have seen that uh, peace talks are also going, uh, going on in some of the areas. Uh, this con uh, there has always been a confusion in this uh, uh, in fight against terrorism. We have seen this... Uh, uh, situation. 
uh, different government in the past we have seen they have uh, uh, they have engaged in peace talks but they collapsed mm -hmm. uh, our military uh, we have seen that military operation to 2008 a successful i am talking about successful uh, operation uh, in 2008 operation rahi nijat uh, and in 2014 zarbia's operation uh, but now it is a bit difficult right uh, but to what extent uh, are to what extent, Javid, are the political tensions that we've seen in the last year in Pakistan, you know, the ouster of former Prime Minister Imran Khan in a no-confidence vote, the protests, to what extent are those political tensions to blame for all the security failures we've seen in the past few months? Actually, we were expecting from Afghan Taliban to play their uh, part, to play their role uh, uh, but we have not seen uh, much, uh, you can say, that fruitful role in uh, it. Uh, well, intelligence bureau operations are going on. We have seen they are uh, 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 they are making their efforts against uh, uh, sleeper cells, uh, against facilitator abettors. Operations are uh, underway. Actually, uh, now, it, they, as uh, my colleagues have mentioned, domestic politics is mm. a basic issue. Okay. Our main players are not on the same page. Okay, interesting. Uh, let me come to you, Imtiaz. And uh, Musharraf talked about the Afghan Taliban and the fact that that could have been, that is perhaps a factor in, in the rise of attacks uh, in Pakistan by the Pakistani Taliban, that they feel emboldened now that the uh, government, uh, the well, the leadership in Afghanistan is the Taliban, that they feel emboldened. Interesting, though, interestingly, though, with this attack, the Afghan Taliban, through one of their officials, Suhail Shaheen, have condemned uh, the attack in Peshawar, saying that places of worship has their sanctity in their religion. What do you make of this? And the fact that the Pakistani Taliban itself has tried to distance itself from the attack. Uh, what, what is going on here? And what's the relationship between the PTT and the Afghan Taliban? Well, it's a very complex uh, issue. But uh, let me say that um, the relationship between the Afghan and the Pakistani Taliban is very symbiotic, that both consider themselves as uh, each other's comrades, and the Pakistani Taliban have vowed allegiance to the Afghan Taliban. So when they try to distance themselves from the Pakistani Taliban, it doesn't hold any water. Secondly, uh, nearly 1,800 prisoners had fled the jails of Afghanistan when the Taliban returned to power in August 2021. Many of them were either TTP or ISK or Al-Qaeda leaders. Yes, so that has... Uh, considerably contributed to the surge in violence. However, we must underline that Pakistan is facing a sort of proxy terrorism. It has been facing this proxy terrorism for more than a decade uh, under different franchises. Uh, you know, you may they may bear a different name, but the objective is the same, and that is to prick the state of Pakistan mm. to create a sense of instability in this country to project Pakistan as an unstable, terror-stricken country. Uh, and this is, I would say, being externally driven. When I'm saying it's proxy terrorism, this is being externally driven. And uh, Externally driven by whom? Uh, well, I wouldn't name, but there are there is no method to this madness that we see in this country. These couple of, a few thousand people cannot really even imagine to capture the state of Pakistan the way they have been claiming. They have been issuing denials uh, in many cases, mm. but these denials okay. certainly hold no water. And I think this is a perennial conflict that Pakistan finds itself in, regardless whether the army, the military makes a claim of having broken their backs. But I don't think we have broken their backs. This is a continuous fight that we shall have to fight until we have resolved a number of issues that are connected mm. with China, that are connected mm. China-U.S. rivalry, as well as American-India 
relationship and Pakistan's relations with India. So okay, let's ask Musharraf. Musharraf, are there external factors at play here, you think, as Imtiaz believes? And talk to us about the rise in insurgency in Pakistan. What is behind this and, and why are security forces specifically being targeted? Well, I think there's no question that Pakistan is the target of many different uh, adversaries that uh, seek to undermine and damage uh, the Pakistani project. This is, a, this is a fact of life for Pakistanis that we've dealt with since the founding of the country in 1947. Mm -hmm. uh, as some viewers would know and others wouldn't, Pakistan was split into two in 1971. Uh, Pakistan has been the victim of uh, perhaps the most sustained wave of terrorism really anywhere uh, since 2001, since the U.S. Uh, mission to free Afghanistan of the Taliban began in October 2001. And whilst Pakistan has done all this, Pakistan has also concurrently been uh, tarred and feathered as being too soft on the Taliban and, mm. and being incapable. What I alluded to earlier is that the Pakistani There have also been reports, to... Musharraf, that, that the Pakistani government, the, the government in Islamabad, directly supported the Afghan Taliban in their uh, insurgency back in Afghanistan, directly supported them in, in ousting the government there and, and international forces. Uh, so I think that those are accusations that, you know, sort of only hold water to the extent that the Pakistanis, since day one, have argued that the only way the issues in Afghanistan would be resolved would be around a table. Mm -hmm. That was the Pakistani position in Bonn in 2001, and it was the consistent, sustained position of Pakistan across a military dictator, an elected government of uh, coalition partners, a government of only one party, then a government of their direct adversaries. No matter who's been in power in Pakistan, Pakistan is said the same thing. You will have to have a conversation with the Taliban in order to resolve the issues in Afghanistan. Unfortunately, that advice wasn't heeded. But that doesn't uh, absolve Pakistan of its responsibility of protecting Pakistani citizens and lives. So, yes, there are Pakistani adversaries, not just India, but other countries as well, that seek to take advantage of instability, economic crises, political crises. There, there has been proxy terrorism in Pakistan right since 1947. Mm. What the argument, however, needs to be focused on is the Pakistani state capable of fighting this and what it has proven between 2014 and 2016 in particular is that it is absolutely capable of defending this country, of protecting Pakistani but, lives and of re, re, reasserting the republic. But, but when you look the at the current, that, the current situation in Pakistan, and I'm going to put this question to Javed, You've got a government today which is having to deal with multiple issues, an economic crisis, an energy crisis. Is the Pakistani government in its state today capable of fighting this insurgency? Well, it is a challenging task. It is, a, you can say, it is a daunting task. Right now, uh, National Assembly's uh, session is going on, and uh, I believe that they will discuss about it uh, about this savage attack in Peshawar, but I would say that rhetoric and statements will not serve the real purpose. Actually, this is right now, uh, we can see that this is opposition-less uh, uh, parliament. Uh, uh, government should immediately uh, summon, uh, <clears throat> I think, all, pocket, all parties conference. They should discuss this issue. They should make a strategy to deal with this menace, and also, uh, I would say, uh, I would mention here that opposition, opposition, you can say, uh, Imran Khan, mm -hmm. uh, Pakistan Tariq and so, uh, they should also participate in this all parties conference uh, uh, to chalk out a strategy to make a, a, a there, there is a need of unity to deal with this issue. Uh, it is uh, right now. It is. Are, are we going to see point. unity now? You think but, in the in the aftermath of this attack? Because as you know, Imran Khan has been very much uh, uh, opposed to this government. Has been calling for elections in Pakistan. Are we going to see a bit of more of unity now in the aftermath of this attack, or not? The main political players are not on the same page. We are seeing that uh, in the garb of you can say the peace talks, uh, peace process, and peace agreement. You can say that these uh, uh, militants uh, uh, in the garb of this penetrate in Pakistan, and they are scattered now. 
now it is a bit difficult uh, to, uh, to find to uh, to find these militants but uh, our defense minister has hinted that uh, a military uh, that operation uh, military operation could be the option in a uh, near future okay uh, Imtiaz, can the Pakistani government, I'll put the same question to you as I did to Javed, can the Pakistani government, which is today having to deal with a multitude of crises, an, an economic crisis, uh, an energy crisis as well, it's waiting for a bailout from the IMF, can it also take on and win this war against the Pakistani Taliban? Or is Pakistan going to know the same fate as Afghanistan and be one day ruled by the Taliban? Well, certainly uh, Pakistan is not going to take the Afghanistan uh, route as far as uh, terrorism is concerned. But unfortunately, Pakistan's politicians as well as the military leadership uh, as a whole have not risen to the strategic level that is required to fight the multiple crises that this country has been facing. The military has been wanting to reform the country. It has been wanting to take the country out of economic crisis. But it refuses also to disengage from political management. So that is the dilemma that uh, Pakistanis have faced. The military is very good at fighting terrorism, at fighting also criminals, as it has demonstrated. But obviously, when it gets into this distraction, what Musharraf has just said, the distraction, that distraction basically then undermines all the commitments, all the vows that the military gives itself of helping Pakistan move out of economic, social, and political crisis. So it, it, unless it really disengages from the main political discourse and lets the forces of, of political forces as well as uh, forces of economy handle the uh, project itself, it will be very difficult uh, for Pakistan to grapple with these uh, crises. All right. Uh, Musharraf, your thoughts about this. You've said that the military in Pakistan, the, the, the government and the politicians are distracted. What are going to be the political consequences of this attack, in your view? There are those who have said that this could be used perhaps as an excuse to delay the elections, which are scheduled for later this year. What are your thoughts on this? Look, I, I think the focus of the conversation needs to be on, on the victims of this attack and how this is going to be prevented in the future. But frankly, if you look at the history of how terrorism has been fought in Pakistan, politicians have had a very marginal role. And the reason for that is that the entire national security conversation in Pakistan is entirely and completely dominated by the military and the intelligence services. The fact of the matter is that until the military learns how to take orders from elected leaders and execute those orders to the fullest without believing that they are any better than politicians, any less corrupt than politicians, any more competent than politicians. Pakistan is going to continue to struggle. It's going to be very good at doing things like beating the TTP like it did in 2014 and 16. And, that in, and then it is invariably going to let the jack back out of the box mm -hmm. because the cycle of getting back into political management, the, the allure of that and the habit of that, the culture that's been established in this country is extremely powerful. We so have many other problems in Pakistan that mm -hmm. contribute to this. We have a calcified a series of dinosaurs, both politically in the bureaucracy and in the public discourse, that dominate the conversation in a country with a median age of 23, a mm -hmm. country that's bursting with youthful energy and entrepreneurial spirit and creativity, but one whose creativity and entrepreneurial spirit is being, is being stuffed. And to top it off, a culture of fear is emanating so, because these kinds of terrorist attacks are allowed. So in the immediate, Musharraf, how do you protect this population? How do you ensure that such attacks don't happen again? And, and you know, how do you bring about security in the immediate? Well, in the immediate run, there's no option other than robust counterterrorism uh, operations. There was, in, in June of last year, there was a lot of conversation about potentially making concessions to the TTP. And sane people like, like Imtiaz, like Javed, like myself, uh, all around the country, we weren't the only ones, lots and lots of Pakistanis who are 
very patriotic, who love their religion, who are extremely nationalist. They all in unison said that we have to be insane to be considering, even considering the concession of any kind of suspension of the Constitution, the concession of any kind of suspension of, of uh, the rights of uh, individual Pakistanis, groups of Pakistanis. But the fact that these things were considered and the fact that those conversations did not have the approval of parliament, were not discussed on television shows, were not written about in op-eds, but simply were conceived and, and discussed because people in the military thought it was a good idea. That is the kind of thing that this country is going to have to forever shut down and never revisit. If it does, it, we will continue. Today, it's the TTP. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow, it'll be another alphabet soup concoction. But anybody that, that allows the constitution of Pakistan okay. and our democracy to be undermined opens the door for terrorism. All right, Javid, I'm going to get you to tell me what you think the immediate action should be in order to, to prevent an attack such as the one we saw in Peshawar from happening again. How do we protect the Pakistani population? Well, I would uh, say that even uh, military, uh, you can say the military mighty U.S. has faced a problem or trouble uh, to deal with this terrorism. Now, uh, the issue is that uh, our Pakistani government should revisit national action plan. Mm. Uh, they have uh, our military operation. Uh, when we talk about the military operation, operation uh, Rahinejad, Zerbe, uh, Zerbe hey. operation, military operation were successful. Now, right. uh, military, uh, uh, Pakistani government should revisit this national action plan. It will, uh, it will prove fruitful uh, to deal with this. Imtiaz, you have the last word. Javid talked about the U.S. there. Uh, if the security situation were to further deteriorate in Pakistan, would the U.S. and Pakistan join forces, you think, uh, to address these failures? And... Uh, you know, is that likely to happen anytime soon? Well, I hope not, because uh, the past 20 years have been quite traumatic uh, for the entire Pakistani nation just because of this uh, relationship between the U.S., the strategic, so-called strategic partnership. So one would hope that the U.S. once again doesn't uh, extend its arm of cooperation. I think the army uh, is uh, robust enough uh, to deal with these issues, but the most critical, important issue is the empowerment of civilian law enforcement agencies. Even in this case, this tragic incident, we have seen that the police uh, was under complacency just because in critical matters, the provincial police uh, forces are not given the kind of autonomy that they need. And how, uh, this, in addition to that, okay. we really need to be on the alert all the time. It, we cannot relent, we cannot lower our guards in the situation that Pakistan finds itself in. Okay. So it is a continuous, constant struggle. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for a very interesting discussion. Thank you, Imtiaz Gul, Musharraf Zaidi, Javid Al Rahman. Thank you so much. And thank you for watching this edition of Inside Story. You can always watch this program again anytime by visiting our website at aljazeera.com. For further discussion, go to our Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. You can, of course, also join the conversation on Twitter. Our handle is at AJ Inside Story. From me, Fuli Batibo, and the whole team here in Doha, thanks for watching. Bye for now.